Hi everyone, Freddy Hero here, and welcome to today's episode where I'm going to be reviewing the Half Dan Assault Rifle, and also provide you with the ideal God Roll for you to get. The Half Dan is a legendary 360 RPM AR that can be only gotten through Banshee's packages. A slow firing, hard hitting assault rifle like no other, the Half Dan is a special breed of high impact frames for the ARs that focuses on long range capabilities and being a hybrid version of a full auto high impact scout rifle. With it being a unique auto rifle archetype in game, it will be a hard miss not to get this weapon and try it out in PvP or PvE. But for a unique weapon of its kind, it doesn't get a lot of traction from players, even though it's quite a powerhouse. And the reason for this is simple, it's recoil and stability or lack of it. Let's first look at what we're dealing with. Impact 33, range 82, stability 28, handling 45, reload speed 35, aim assist 60, recoil direction 70, zoom 16 and magazine 33. For what's shown is range, aim assist and magazine count seem to be all in a positive area, with range and aim assist being the two main things that will allow this weapon to land its hits at 15 plus meters with no effort. Combine this with an effective scope covering mid to long range engagements and you have an assault rifle that is both accurate at long distances and great with landing headshots while at an effective distance. This weapon is also a high impact frame which offers an extra bonus of making the weapon more accurate when stationary and ADSing, which fits the weapon stats quite well. If you get unlucky with not getting any perks or focus on improving stability, you'll still be able to take on other players thanks to the frame type being used. This won't fully make the weapon better, but it does help in the long run. Unfortunately, the weapon's stability is abysmal with a stat of 28, which will affect the weapon's recoil pattern and overall the weapon's performance out in the field, and not very likely. As this weapon seems to focus on long range engagements because of its high range, its stability will affect your shots as a recoil from firing full auto at 20 plus meters will make your shots bounce and less likely to land. Add in other players flinch fire as well and the chances of you winning 1v1 fights are also lowered further down. That's issue number 1. Issue number 2 is its fire rate which is a 360 RPM variant. This weapon fires slow and I mean really slow and you would use this as a full auto scout in a way so a medium to long range engagements and headshots being your main focus. This is kind of a good thing as it will allow your weapon to be more accurate and can allow you to single tap at longer distances to pick players or enemies off. However, the con to this is that you're going to be unable to go up against most weapons with better accuracy, fire rate, damage, and generally anything that can outpace this weapon in 1v1s. This then puts the weapon at an even more tough spot as the current meta focuses on medium to long range fights that this weapon is meant to excel at. So really, this weapon in the Crucible is very limited in terms of where it can and can't perform in. Out of everything here, the main thing about the weapon that is troublesome is the stability, recoil and slow fire rate. Luckily, there's a few parts we can look out for to make the weapon a bit more better. So firstly, let's focus on the masterwork, and straight away you want to have stability at plus 10. I don't think I need to explain this in detail as a lot of you can already see that stability is a problem for the weapon. So every bit of stability given to the weapon will help with zooming out your shot. If you don't manage to get a stability masterwork, then your best second choice will probably be a reload masterwork as that's the second lowest stat that can be improved on, plus fast reload can allow you to re-engage quicker when up against multiple players. For the mod side of things, I really do recommend you have a counterbalance mod to help with adjusting your weapon's verticality when being fired. I've noticed a drastic change in the weapon's performance the moment I place one on where the weapon becomes a lot more controllable to land your shots from the chest to head region, compared to not having the mod, where I will be missing the vast majority of my shots because of how severe the recoil jump can be. I recommend you try and test this out before applying, just in case you find something completely different compared to my thoughts. Now for the scopes we are given 7 to choose from, but they are separated into 3 categories for us to pick and choose from, so we have a bit of a customization available for us. So in the long range column we have the LDE Watchdog scope, LB Assault and LC Ranged. The mid range column we have SD Thermal and SC Hollow and short range we have GA Post and GB Iron. For the best overall scopes to go with, I would say that the short range scopes are your best choice because they provide a better field of view for the user and the zoom magnification isn't so much for the user to need to adjust to from my point of view. They also provide the best in terms of close to long range engagement as they can provide a decent boost in handling and range, although it's not that needed. The long distance scopes are only ideal if you're going to be picking players off at longer distances, 
and only if you have the stability to back this up. As going full auto with these scopes have come with a lot of negative results from my end. And then the medium range scopes can also be a great choice to pick for medium to long range maps if you don't manage to get the short range scopes. However, I have an issue with the zoom magnification of the scope being a bit too much to adjust to at times, especially against close range fighters that you probably not even notice before it's too late. But this is more of a me problem. Now, perk column 2, within this column we have a vast amount of perks to pick, but remember we are looking for anything that could boost our stability, as stability is the key to unlocking this one for two colours. So firstly we have Tactical Mag, which offers us a plus 5 in stability, plus 10 in reload and plus 10 in magazine. Not the strongest of stability stats to run with, but anything is better than nothing. Do remember, the frame type we're using can help with balancing out our stability, so it's not all doom and gloom until we see what column 3 and 4 offers us. Steady Rounds is an ideal part to get as well, as it offers us a whopping plus 15 in stability, but minus 5 in range. The trade-off against our range is completely fine, as we have enough already, and the boost in stability is what you want to aim for, as it will allow you to push our stability to 43, which we can then further enhance by adding on a plus 10 if we get a stability masterwork. This is what you want to aim for as best you can on your end. Flared Magwall, the same as Tactical Mag, nothing too great as it gives us a plus 5 in stability and plus 15 in reload, but still worth keeping if you didn't get lucky the first time as it still gives us a boost in stability. The two other perks to look into as well if you don't get stability focus perks are Drop Mag for its very high increase in reload speed, but trade off or wasting ammo much more faster, and Alloy Magazine which is the same as Drop Mag but only activates once you use up all your magazine. Although they focus primarily on reload speed, we still have column 3 and 4 to work with that could by chance offer us something worthwhile to use with the real other side perks. All the other perks I've left out, as you've guessed it, they focus on either more range, magazine increase or more zoom. Not something that we need for the half down. Perk column 3. In this column, this is where the perks need to benefit the weapon and as a whole synchronise with perk column 2 and 4. Tap the trigger provides a boost to stability and accuracy on initial shot, which is handy for weapons that have either high recoil direction when fired or low RPM rate. For our AR, it's a 360 RPM and fires quite slowly, so it can benefit the weapon as a whole through making the shot 99.9% .9 accurate, which aids the weapon in landing headshots if going for auto or single tap fire. We can also, and this is something I only recommend you do if you just want to mess around with the weapon and the stats, can also turn the half down into a scout rifle variant, thanks to its RPM, which can work out quite well. As the user can tap fire, which will always activate the perk, and its range is quite high, so you can aim and focus purely on headshots, and the accuracy plus stability boost from the perk is always going to be accurate, but this is only if you decide to tap fire with it, then only tap fire. But I've noticed from practicing every now and then, it can work although it's not really something you want to be using in the crucible all the time. Under pressure, another viable part to have for any type of weapon can be extremely useful in that case as it will gradually centre our AR's aggressive recoil once it hits around half its magazine count. As long as you can get in the mid-range engagement and at least hit your target with the weapon, then this perk is definitely worth keeping, especially like I said before, with the frame type allowing you to get more accuracy and stability as long as you're needing. Dynamic spray reduction a perfect perk for any weapon that has a high recoil and high fire rate, this perk will boost accuracy over time, and just like under pressure, will allow you to control your recoil direction to be more centred. For the half dan, this could be a godsend as it can boost your accuracy while moving, firing or standing, and then you can rely on the weapon's frame perk to further boost accuracy while kneeling and staying still. Now snapshot sight and crit draw do have their places, but it's not currently needed for the half dan because of its TTK. An outlaw can help and be useful as a perk, but you really need to focus on weapon weaknesses first before attempting to focus on the area that is actually good already. Perk column 4. The final slot, the one that should ideally synchronise with the rest of the perks and finalise the core of the weapon. This isn't a make or break section so don't worry if you don't get the following. Rampage, a well known and effective perk for generally any weapon it's based on, it can help with boosting on TDK to effectively shut down players faster and is definitely worth keeping. Rangefinder, it's a good part to have for this weapon as its range is at 82, so it doesn't need any further increase in the stats, 
but Range Rider can help with pushing back our damage drop off numbers by just an extra bit. And since you can be engaging at long distances anyways, then I don't see any problems with keeping the perk if you have another half down focusing on just purely range. High impact rounds, the same as Rampage, except you get a small brief damage boost from the last few rounds of the magazine. I tend to find this effective when fighting at longer distances, as a brief damage increase can help with finishing fights slightly faster, but I would prefer Rampage or Kill Clip instead. Kill Clip, just like Rampage, after a kill and we reload, we can get a damage boost to improve our TDK for a few seconds. However, this would best pair with something like Drop Mag, so you can instantly activate it there and then. Still good to use, but it will probably be better to use Rampage instead for our current weapon. Moving Target, a perk which can enhance our movement speed and increase our target acquisition when ADSing and moving. Now although it sounds great to have, it's not a perk I would choose straight away for the weapon, unless I have my stability at a reasonable level. The extra stickiness it gets is great, as I can allow you to focus on the center chest area and the head area with extra precision. And when paired with something like Dynamic Sway Reduction, you'll pretty much have all the areas that the weapon's company weak at covered. Now the leftover perks we have are Pulse Monitor, which is usable, but rarely, and Grave Robber, which is just a big no-no. So, to conclusion. The final step to our Defying God roll. These are the ideal perks to look for when getting a necessary roll to the weapon. Mast Work should be Stability plus 10. Mod, Counterbalance. Scope, GA Post or GB Iron. Column 2, Steady Rounds or Tactical Mag. Column 3, Under Pressure or Dynamic Sway Reduction. Column 4, Rampage or Moving Targets. From what is shown, half the perks presented are limited in providing stability boost where the weapon needs it most, as if Bungie doesn't want this weapon to be considered unique for its gun stats. The half down focuses purely on dominating that range and accuracy from the stats to make it a contender against other ARs, which focuses on medium engagement, but with the small perk pool offered, the few perks offered are really what we can only work with and the likelihood chances of us getting steady rounds, dynamic sway reduction, and move a target in one go is quite low, for some. Luckily, the high impact frame that the half down possesses can aid us with a stability boost, if we don't get the ideal perks needed for this area, with the standard trade off of needing to stay crouched to activate it. I would also say having the catabalus mod is a must, so the weapon can become more vertical within our favour. As long as you meet the requirements of getting the column 2 and 3 to focus on the main weak points of the weapon, then you ultimately will be fine with using this weapon in the crucible and getting kills with it. But don't take my experience as truth, go test one out and see the difference in the perks for the gold roll variant to hunt for. So that comes to the end of the weapons review video and the gold roll episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press that bell button to stay always updated when I upload, as I appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching, Guardians, and I hope to see you again soon.